G'day everybody, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia Heal, aka Indianapolis, your acrylic guru. Now today, we're going to paint a wolf and a moon scene, okay? So, I have a, a picture here that I'm going to show you what we're going to get it from. And before we do, we'll just show you the size of our canvas board we're going to use. It's a 30 centimeter by 42, and of course... All the colours are going up the screen there like that, all right? All right. So without further ado, we'll get on to this and um, I'll just show you the picture we're going to reference from. It's a nice blues and dark blues and purples and just black. It's pretty simple. So we're going to capture this great big massive moon with some depth clouds in there and just a, a foreground hanging rock with the silhouette of the wolf on there. All right, so we'll use that as our reference picture. It won't be exact, but we'll get be using it for the ideas. <laughs> on the the palette down here all right get on down here and I'll show you the colors we're going to use at the moment all right first of all we need some white flowing paint which is right there and next to that I think we'll um, we'll put some retarder over here oh look at that nice wet liquidy retarder we're going to need that because we want this wet and retarded and conditioned ready to blend now, first things first, I want to get my water bottle and just spray this canvas with a mist or water. This is conditioning it, ready to get those beautiful blendeds. Now, down here, we're going to get the retarder. And we're retarding up the surface of our canvas there, because it's all that... We're going to have a lot of blending to carry on here, okay? So we've got some beautiful moistness occurring onto our canvas there. Now, I'm mixing that retarder into that white flowing paint. And we want to laden this up onto our canvas. Get it right on there. Because this is going to create the foundation of our blending. So we've got beautiful amounts of retarder on both sides of that paint, underneath, inside it and on top. Alright, get the brush strokes out. And then we'll get across to some other sky colours. Alright, we want to get some of our... Halo blue and our dioxine purple and we want to incorporate some black just a little bit of black because I don't want to use the dioxine on its own I want to make it a little bit darker by adding some black to it all right so now, we've conditioned the canvas, we've, we've sprayed it with water, we've got retarder on it, we've got retarder mixed in that white flowing paint, and we've laden that all over the canvas there. So now we're going to get, these other colours are going to have retarder in it as well, because they are going to be blended. So, um, we'll get some retarder onto those colours. And um, just looking at the reference here, come and have a look at that. Now it's obviously dark around the edges and it's coming lighter into the middle. And we've got a little bit of glare I can see on the outside of the moon, all right? So we'll start off in the middle, I suppose, and get our blue coming out. And when we put the clouds on with the white, it'll just create these shapes, hopefully. Okay, I won't muck around. I'm going to get that blue 
onto my brush. I'm just using a two inch brush to apply it because I don't want to muck around with this. I want it on there. I want a bit more retarder in there. All right, and now uh, there's the center of the painting there. So we're just sort of going to come around, around and around and around and around and around to the outside like that. And that's what you call not mucking around, all right? Now I'm going to blend that to a degree. So I've got myself a little two inch blending brush and I want to see here, I want to get all those little scratchy marks out. So let's make that happen. Now look what that retard is doing. You come in a bit closer if you can't see that. It's allowing everything to merge and blend beautifully. Now I'm slowly picking up paint on my blending brush as you can see. So I'm wiping it on my paper towels. I just so happen to have handy down there. Anyway, let's not muck around. Like I said, we want to get this blended. Sometimes you can find your blending can be stamped. You practice blending before you blend like this. And when you know it, you know what to do. But we're virtually creating those lighter areas where it can become darker towards the outside edge. All right, I want to get some more phalo blue, wipe the brush onto here. Now that there, I brushed it in, which you can see it's picked up the white and brought the white in, okay? Now this phalo blue, the second bit I want to put on, I want to stamp on where we got most of the darkness, over here. So I want to stamp this on because if I brush it on, it's going to bring it to this colour here. This is how the this retarder does things. And that white underneath it, oh, it's not going to have much there. Alright, I'm just looking here. And I'll probably blend that into there. See, the more you scratch it, you're picking up the white from underneath. All right, now I want to blend this into that blue there. I've got to work a bit fast because I'm filming this. I've got to try and, because the lights are going to dry everything out. And I want to be able to blend the clouds into this as well because if this dries before I get my white paint on there to blend my clouds my clouds are not going to happen the way I normally like them to so I've got to sort of be a bit quick here come across the top get over there I've still got to put the dioxine purple in with this yet I'm just sort of twisting the brushes on blending you know making things as I've said in previous videos, just artistically maneuver yourself and get things maneuvered in an artistic way and you get excited and happy. And I've got to calm down now because I'm starting to get a bit excited. I don't get too excited on camera there. Otherwise all sorts of things can happen. All right, now what I'm going to do is we'll get the deoxine purple in and blend that into that darker phalo blue, all right? Now I've pulled some of the black and I'm getting it into this dioxine purple and of course this has retarder in it as well. So now we want to stamp this on as well. Yeah, that's dark. Stamp it and sort of spider web it into there. Just like that. We'll get the very bottom corner done. Stamp that on and probably a hint over here. Maybe uh, there as well. Now, I've just wiped my blending brush. I'll see if I need to go and wash it. Now, we want to blend that into the darker phalo blue. Wipe your brush as you go, it's important. Wipe it, twist it lightly on it, work out the depth you've got to go. Now, don't forget, 
our reference picture is just a reference. I'm not trying to get the exact look. All right. We're just using it for the ideas of this painting. And if it works out to be very, very similar, well, so be it. Now we're getting this twisting. You don't want to muck around with this. You, you, at home, you've got time. You're not explaining every move you've got to do. It's, I've got to sort of rush you, so excuse my mannerism. I've got to capture enough time into this so as the clouds will work. Oh. fan brush that's my favorite brush I like to stamp my clouds on with I'm using a, a titanium white it's a structured white it's not that flowable stuff it's a totally different paint it's got body and thickness to it and we want to get some clouds up here so first of all we'll dance some over here which is I'm just looking at the painting there do a bit at a time put that down I'm grabbing a blending brush come over and have a look closer now we want to wipe your brush, pull that down into the blues. Okay, we're going to have some dark blues and all sorts carrying on there. Right, that'll do. Now let's get some more, and we'll probably put some here now. So we'll. Like that. Okay. Let's blend that. Wipe the brush. See, it's picking it up very easily. It's getting those darker colours in there. And we'll bring this down. Because we're going to have that rock here, don't forget. So I'm just trying to create something which is going to be around where the moon is. Okay, I know my rock's going to start from about here somewhere, so I want to put a, another cloud in front of that formation now. So we've got the light a bit there, and this is coming in front of it. Now I'm going to leave the top. Very, see I'm hardly touching this. Jeez, I wish you were right next to me so you can see exactly how it's done because unfortunately some people have so much trouble trying to do their clouds. And then we'll bring that down. Okay. Twist that a bit. Now we're going to have some fun doing this cloud here, okay? Now look at it, see how smooth and creamy and melted it is into the background? That's what we're going to do. Okay, I've stamped this first cloud on there. I'm sorry, but my camera was off when I thought it was on. Now I made sure it's on this time. And I've blended it down because I want to put something else in front of it now. So we're going to get something just like that and we're going to blend this leave that top halfway down wipe your brush wipe your brush we'll bring that into the darker dioxine there wipe your brush and we've created all that fluffy, dark, sensational cloud. Now see this one here, he's looking a bit brave and a bit smart there. So we'll soften him up a bit, just like that. And 
I'm looking at the display picture. There is a few highlights there, so I might just highlight some of these. Just like that, like that. Getting some of it highlighted more distinctively. All right. And of course, if some of the highlights that you've just put on are a bit too brash, you can, you know, muck with them a bit. But I had enough time, all this retarder stayed wet enough for me to do all these clouds. If you're happy with your clouds, don't highlight them like this, because if you're not too familiar at doing them this way, but you, you pulled a good cloud off, leave it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. I'd like to bring that off the canvas there. So it's not edged. All right. Well, we're getting there. We're not mucking around too much. Hang on, <clears throat> better get that down there. Because the rock's not gonna go there. Now we're sort of getting the, um, what's it look like, the monitor. I'm going to dry this and put the template on and stamp the moon on, but I've already got the clouds on there and obviously the moon is behind the clouds. So we're going to stamp it on carefully. And I can see in their picture as well, I want the moon sort of fading. I don't want it a big solid white moon as well, all right? So, um, and I need a drink of my coffee. Yep. You know, and this is the difference this retarder does, a clear retarder. There are white retarders as well. I've never used it. I'm familiar with this and I stick to it. This stuff is that great. You can have it in your coffee or on your cereal. It's beautiful stuff. And you can see this is still wet. That's acrylic. I mean, I could still move that around. It's wet. It's flowing. It's like working wet on wet, all right? That's how you condition your canvas to get this happening. And of course, once you blow dry that, you put the brakes on and she won't blend anymore because you're going to put other stuff on top. Oh, all right. Now, what we'll do, I'm going to blow dry this now and we'll get on to the next procedure. I've got my moon template on there. It's just made out of plastic sheeting and I've cut it out. It's very hard for the camera to pick up, but there it is. And that's the size that I want me moon. Now, I've got some white titanium paint and I'm going to use some sponges. You can use brush, sponge, whatever you wanted to apply the paint to your moon. Okay, I'm going to use my sponge and we'll pick up some paint. I'm just going to pick up some white paint first, get it on the sponge enough, and virtually map out on the stencil, because it's such a bigger moon, work out where I want my moon to be. Okay, so I'm going to sort of have it coming here. Now we've got to watch them clouds. See that cloud there? That cloud's in front of it. About there. Put the faintest out there just to make sense of the other side of the moon. Because I'm going to add some greys into this. Okay, that's me moon there. It looks like rubbish at the moment. I'm picking up, see this is still dirty. I'm picking up that gray, smearing it all in there. Now I want to hold my stencil there and I want to create this moon now. So keeping off the clouds, if you can help it. I'm making the moon there. sort of stop him about there somewhere. What I might do is push that cloud back in front of it. Because it's sort of... There we go. I'm happy with that. I'm just feeling my way around this moon like I'm dancing this all over the place here, there. Maybe a bit of that. What does that look like in there? Bit of darkness. 
Oh yeah. Look at that. Now I want to finish this off now with the white. If I could stop mucking it up, look at what I'm doing there. See moons. They're not that bad. It's when you take the stencil off that all the fun begins. I want to put some of the blue back because I've sort of stamped a bit too much of it out. So I'll come back here and get some of our blue back in there with some white maybe. That's the colour it is. Get that back in on the moon surface. Just like that. Okay, now I've got another cleaner sponge. I've dampened it. I'm getting just the white now. And I want to just this half of the moon's edge. Can you see there yet? Yeah. I want to crisp that up nice and white. Hang on, let's get it on the back. See what I did there, but that's all right, it's a moon. And we'll come around this way and we'll crisp it up just that very edge. Get that off there, and I'll bleed it into there. It's a big lump in my paint, no good. All right, and we're just going to like that. And probably just the faintest bit back here as well. There we go. Now we'll take this stencil off. And then we can fine tune it with our cloud again. Look at that moon. Beautiful big moon. Because we've got a mist some sort of cloud back over here you want to get it yourself I'm going to use myself a smaller very smaller blending blending brush just so as I can dirty it with some white paint and I'll be like putting steam or mist or something over there but first I want to dry this moon first so I don't destroy it so now what I want to do is I want to turn this into this kind of smoky stuff so I've got my clean dry brush I'm just picking up some titanium white Okay, now I'm wiping it off into my paper towel and we want to go softly and mystified. See, that's still too much. You just need the very littlest. And we're going to turn this cloud misty over in front of that moon there. Find the edges there. And then we can break up the middle and make it however. Can have it a so you're virtually picking up your paint you'll get used to doing it as you do a lot of this stuff pick your paint up wipe it off intensify it onto the canvas where you want it and then blend it off okay so i want to blend that softer on the edges there this is just sitting that moon back this bit here will come over in front of the moon there see if i didn't dry it I could have picked up all that purple and put in there and destroyed it. So that's why I like to tell people, study a picture before you do it. Here we go, look at that. And see here, we'll just sort of tassel that. So I wet my brush, wiped it off, and we'll bring some of this in front of the moon as well. Some sort of... There we go. See, there's not much on here at all. You put too much on. You'll have trouble. Might like to just get some brighter bits in here as well. Just cause it's around the moon. You don't have to do this, I'm just being particular here. Sometimes with my paintings, once I've filmed them, I um, sit it on my table and I go back and look at it walk past it for a couple of days and I find things to do and I fine tune them and change them and re repair them in a way. 
Okay, I'm going to make a traceable for the wolf, and that'll be available on my Facebook page. And we'll put the wolf on here now. Now I've got the carbon paper under me wolf where I've placed it where I want. I just mainly want the wolf, just to get a decent outline of the wolf. And I'm using a red pen because you can see where you've gone over the traceable. Surface of the rock roughly within. That, that'll do it. Like I said, I'll make a traceable for that and I'll, if you contact me on my Facebook page, you'll be able to get it. There's our wolf. Now what you can do when you've done a traceable, grab your pencil and then you can go over roughly just where you want to finish it off. We'll bring this mountain down here. On the rock ledge, whatever it is. It's coming off the picture there. I can finally see what's happening there. It's just a silhouette, so that's all right. Now find yourself a good detailed brush. And I'm, I've got my little flathead brush here. I feel I can get nice edges on this. And we'll just go for the edge. Find that edge of the wolf or whatever your silhouette is. I'm just using plain black here. And bring his mouth down. I want his mouth with a bit of an opening in there. So I want to make sure that happens. Okay. Now see here on the underneath side of his neck, that had a lot of little frills. So I'll paint them in now. They don't have to be drawn in with the traceable. See, I'm frilling all that up like that. Get it nice and hairy and scratchy out into that moon. And then we can block it, block it all in. Getting the frills under his tail there. The underside's sort of furry and scratchy. The top side of it in the picture is quite solid. Now we'll get a tree here just to get rid of this loneliness on the rock because there is a tree there and we've got a, sort of like a double tree so I'm using my small flathead brush that's all munted up at the end and I can get some foliage on there in a roundabout way just to sink back those branches you can even have some of it out on its own it doesn't have to be sitting on a branch just a quick simple tree and some out here now that's pretty much it. I've picked up a little bit of white into that black. Our moon's there, so I'd like to kind of highlight that side of the bushes there, just with the lightest of greys. Is it picking that up? It is a little bit. It's just subtle, but just something to highlight those edges. Okay. All right, I might just sign this and we'll put a frame on it and see how she looks. Okay, so I'll put my signature up here somewhere. And we'll get Steve's foot in there. Okay, now we'll whack it. 
frame on that and see how that one looks in a frame. Okay. We got our big moon, we got our wolf on a foreground rock, and we got some reasonably okay clouds and a bit of a tree to sit on the rock there as well. That's not too shabby, eh? All right, if you like what I do, you tell a friend, but if you don't, like I say, you tell everybody. And there'll be a, a link in the description below for my Facebook page, a link in the description below for my Patreons page. You can come on there and help support my content and hit the little head of me in the corner there to subscribe as well. All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.